Greetings and welcome to another exciting edition of Poet the Poet. I'm Robert Dunn and I'm the host of this extravaganza, at least until Ken Starr gets after me down in Washington, D.C. <laughs> in any event, uh, we're coming to you from the Orange Bear on Murray Street in Tribeca, lower part of Manhattan, just a couple of steps away from City Hall and every so often Rudy drops in for advice. <laughs> and. Uh, but I'm never there for some reason when he does, which is kind of a pity. Uh, the focus of our show is poetry and other adventures, and we have two adventurous souls with us today. Uh, we have Earl Coleman um, over here in a suit, or what's left of it? Wave to your fans, Earl. <laughs> and, uh, and we also have, and wish me luck on the pronunciation on this one, Malpameni. Am I close? Malpameni. Malpameni, all right. Uh, I'll work on that. I'll get it before the show ends, I promise you. But, uh, uh, in any event, um, we're going to uh, start with Mel Pomini. And um, she has some fascinating uh, material to do. Uh, nonetheless, as her bio, which is about the most uh, zen-oriented bio I've ever had to go through on the... Uh, on the show here. I know two things for sure. She's a native New Yorker and she writes marvelous poetry, uh, which she started in uh, high school. And if I'm reading this correctly, you had this wild affair with the works of Samuel Beckett, at least in book form. Uh, no, and no. I, I, I discovered that what I was working at was mm -hmm. already being done. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I didn't think that two were mm -hmm. needed. Ah. Uh. Yes. And then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've... And then Beckett quit, right? Right, yeah. Oh, no, good. no, no. <laughs> he, he, he was 51, <laughs> and I was... I, I just thought I, I ought to go off in another direction. Mm -hmm. um, my background's in theater. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm very much interested in poetry and performance, uh, mm -hmm. which I think is coming into its own now. Um, and I'm uh, hoping to do a uh, mm -hmm. a production of Garcia Lorca's uh, mm -hmm. Lament for Inesia Sanchez. Mm -hmm. I want to stage it. Uh, what is it about that particular work that entices you so? It's span. It's um, and it's passion. Mm -hmm. And of course, the beautiful mm -hmm. use of language. Ah. Now, what about this Ossip uh, Mandelstam? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm doing a play about the Mandelstams mm -hmm. and also about the other poets of the Russian Silver Age. Mm -hmm. Marina um, Tsvetaeva, Anya mm -hmm. Nothing to do with Fabergé eggs or anything, I trust. No, nothing to do with Fabergé eggs. It's more mm -hmm. to do with uh, camps, mm -hmm. uh, forced labor camps, uh -huh. uh, the persecution of, of poets, uh, Peasants, workers, and mm -hmm. anyone else who who was there. Yes, yes, I can imagine. Um, what did you bring for us today? Uh, well, I brought a poem uh, about the Shoah. Mm -hmm. The what? The Shoah, the Holocaust. Ah, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, mm -hmm. my poems are often about either historical events or mm -hmm. about place. Uh, or uh, mythology. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, let's um, let's get into the that Holocaust piece then. Okay. Show up. Mm -hmm. Sun sweeps splintered boards. Breeze of early dawn. Stillness of Ferris wheels and stopped cars. Silence hovers above stale smells along the promenade. An army of shade strolls languidly out toward the promontory. Distractedly the dead parade toward the gates of heaven, looking for lost loves, hoping to catch up to the long lost, long dead. These new ones given up by the night ascend, whole families laid waste by fire, pestilence, and war. A stream of sighing women, swaying men, a throng of crying children, not order, not chaos, but a surge through the morning slow, press and quiver, chill wing shiver, ascending with the sun to the height of noon. In space so packed with ghosts, the living must wind in and out, 
barely moving, the multitude billowed in a rising column of ash, blown out over the oceans to amusement park stations to take up their places, beards and sidelocks, clean-shaven faces, ripple in phosphorescent haze. Seeking women scan the faces of children, hoping not to find them, or to find them and draw them close enough to cover their nakedness. The iron horse rumbles. Night of broken shards, crystal in the moonlight, knuckles pink on jagged fists. The eternal flame flickers. Broken jaw face down in the gutter, mind numb. Head for the sewers, a life underground, troglodyte cities to eat mud. Flee, flee from the city. Where? Where from one to another, west, east, to the forest? It's the same, the same, always the same everywhere. Justice has moved to the basement. Nuremberg, the reign of the rubber truncheon. Hide, hide, the chase is on. Who is watching? Who is knocking at the door? Who will turn me in? Who will betray me? Whom will I betray? Aniloma Amin. Aniloma Amin. I do not believe it. It is dark in the cellar. Nuremberg dark. Theresienstadt. Hovering above the holiday camp at railroad sidings and platforms, crowds of Pharaoh's former slaves, their sons and daughters dragged off by the legions of Titus, his prize, to the cesspits of Europe, dispersed, regathered, re-ghettoed, whistling and writhing wraiths on the wind, to work in, to die in the death factories, Auschwitz, Majdanek, poison showers and crematoria belching plumes of smoke. Rising, rising without a backward glance along the route, shuttling trains, the maze constructed by the mustachioed corporal and attendant scum. Who will believe this? The borderless slime recedes as dawn displaces night. The stands are opening along boardwalks and beaches everywhere. The sand will soon be covered by bronzers and bathers in the interstices between the brawny beer-swilling bikers and gum-chewing, giggling girls. They're buttocked and tattooed. The passing ghosts thread their way brushing by under the awnings, wind blown on frisbees arcing skyward on beams of blue light, amid the cascades of cotton candy and caramel apples, the carnival of honky-tonk hawkers and pipe organs, liquorous waves pounding and resounding, staring down a sunny day at the lifeguards lazing, dreamily gazing out to the sunlit sea. The sunlight is filled with their shadows, the ghost procession, like a giant slinky undulating, beating, blowing in a counterpoint to ocean's rhythm. How will you know us? Not by our bones, for we have none. How will our flesh be reassembled, nameless and frameless from the great mountain of ash? The resurrection is a trick, a feat no one can fathom. Anima amin, anima amin. I believe it can be done. That is an amazing piece because I've never heard such lyricism applied to such a horrific inspiration. And however did you manage it? Um, well, I, 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 I don't, I don't know. It's. I think it is about um, hope, even mm-hmm. in the face of despair. That uh, mm-hmm. the 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 phrase uh, anima amin in Hebrew means I believe, and mm-hmm. it's usually it's part of the liturgy in, in declaring your belief mm-hmm. in God and the world to come and the redemption. Yeah. I think it's I believe in a perfect fi- in with a perfect faith. faith in, yes, is the quote. Yes, in the prayer, um, it is very impressive. Um, do uh, when you perform the piece, do people generally come away with a sense of hope? 
Um, well, I, I have not performed it very often yet. Mm -hmm. Actually, I've done it just recently. Mm -hmm. um, but I, uh, I find that they are not depressed, which is which makes me feel, you know, because that's not the objective. Mm -hmm. The objective is not to... Uh, All right. I would like to get in another sample of your work. Okay. Mm. Um, well, this is, is one that uh, emerges from uh, a, a, long, a long love affair with uh, Aeschylus the Agamemnon. However, that's just the first part of a trilogy. Uh -huh. And uh, when I... I read the rest of it. I discovered that uh, he really made me mm -hmm. quite annoyed because he alters the dispensation uh, to mm -hmm. sort of assert that women are just a furrow mm -hmm. and that it's it's really okay. the man. Let's, who, let's share some of that annoyance okay. then. Epidaurus. In this roofless mansion of Iskalian scansion, clouds calling, night slowly falling. At Epidaurus, the ancient chorus sings out upon the wind. Pressed into the side of the hill, rows of stone benches still, the arcs of vanished spectators waiting, torchlight flickers, laughter and applause. Breathless, I take shelter between the columns, opening like a giant maw onto the stage. I thrust my torso forward. Holding the temple pillars, do I dare leave the security of this marble embrace? The arena beckons. I raise my mask, adjust my costume. I hear my voice gliding out before me. Alone, at the center, I stare out at the citizenry. Now transparent, hushed, and surprised to see me. Woman. Gentlemen of Athens, and you too, Aeschylus, actor, poet, fiddler, and author of new dispensations. I, Clytemestra, I, Fury, by Athena, Apollo, Dionysus, and all of the drunken stars over Argos. Oh, and all you wannabes of the Areopagian court. I, Clytemestra, am not merely a furrow into which seed is to be spilt. I, Fury, am not so easily mollified. Blood is not easily silenced, you old misogynist. You'll have to do better than that if you expect vengeance to be subjugated to law. That is equally impressive. Um, do you give advice on writing? Uh, well, I... <laughs> Uh, not yet, no, but uh, if mm. anyone is... Uh, if we cornered you, what it, would you say? Uh, I would say read. Just read a great deal and uh, read as widely as you can. Mm -hmm. But also try and anchor, mm -hmm. try and develop a relationship with mm -hmm. all that's come behind you mm -hmm. so that you can project it all mm -hmm. into the mm -hmm. future. Yes. Uh, Mel Pomene, you bring tremendous honor to the name that you've adopted. Yeah. for your work and I'm very glad you came in today um, we have to move on uh, but we'll be back in a moment with Earl Coleman and something completely different so don't go away